Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Uh, hope, thank you for joining me on this wonderful dry Monday morning. We had a fun, rainy weekend, but we're back again. Um, like every Monday at noon, we do an information and motivation session. But today we're gonna flip it around. We're gonna we're gonna talk about um, forms, the new forms uh, required beginning August 17, and I'm gonna explain to you how to fill out the forms and then give you some ideas on how to use those forms. But before that, I have some incredible news. Uh, so mortgage rates have officially dropped to the lowest in more than a year. Mortgage rates today have effect effectively dropped to the lowest amount in a year. Uh, we're somewhere in the low sixes and FHA may, may drop below six. Uh, and I just checked before jumping into this uh, presentation, there's still $32 million left in Hometown Heroes. So I highly recommend that you guys talk to your CMG loan officer after this, uh, and you'll be able to um, help your buyers get some of that free money. Because there's a lot of free money out there in Hometown Heroes, so take advantage of that. But mortgage rates are today the lowest they've been in a year. Uh, we all been waiting for that magical day. Um, so, and I think they might drop a little more. So take advantage and get your buyers ready to go. Um, team, the way we're gonna do this is, if you guys have any questions, write them in the chat. When I'm done going through uh, every form, I'm gonna open it to, uh, to one or two questions and after every form, so not to overwhelm everybody. Uh, we already covered the exclusive buyer's agreement that is uh, was shared with you guys on uh, WhatsApp. And I believe it was also posted to the Facebook group. That recording is there so you can watch it. Uh, this is being recorded. This will also be available for you guys to watch at a later time. So without further ado, let's get cranking. Let me begin by sharing um, the first form we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about the touring agreement. I believe you guys can see my screen right there. Try to make it a little bigger. Let me move you guys down and we'll move this out of the way. We'll get to that on later. Okay, so based on the August 17 uh, ruling from NAR, uh, realtors working with a buyer um, have to identify themselves of that relationship they have with that buyer. Now, uh, the first thing I covered last week was the exclusive buyer's agreement. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to work with every buyer as an exclusive buyer's agent. That's not so. You can work in uh, different forms. One of those forms is exclusive buyer's agent, which we covered last week. One of the other forms is the one that I'm covering right here. So if you encounter a buyer who is... Um, Someone that was, a, let's say there was a referral that came from one of your advertising online, right? So the touring agreement serve the same purpose as complying to the requirements of the requirements of um, the requirements of the NAR settlement without making their relationship, without making that relationship formal. So you have access to work with a buyer without making that relationship formal which means that that buyer is not exclusively working with you. That buyer could be working with other realtors. Pretty much the same way that all of you listening to me have been working with buyers since the beginning of time. So this form does not make it exclusive. This form just makes it a way that you can work with a buyer by just satisfying the requirement. So this one is called the property pre-touring agreement. So property pre-touring agreement is just that. It's an agreement to go see homes together. So this is filled out very simply. I'm a real estate agent with Canvas Real Estate. My consumer, Pete, my Pete Gonzalez, right, will be using broker services to view properties we partially agree on for, and then the amount of dates. So first one is the name of the company, Canvas Real Estate. Second one is the name of the broker. This is the last people we're letting in. Whoever is not in after this, sorry, but we made it clear the first five minutes we shut off the entrance. Uh, so we're done letting people in. Um, so the real estate license is the broker. The consumer is the name of your consumer. And then the next one is this little box right here. This little box right here says 
for how many days you're going to be working with that buyer. Now, my recommendation is 30 to 60 days because the idea is you met the buyer, you showed them properties for about a week or a weekend or two weeks, you already build that relationship with this buyer, and then you can move to either a showing agreement or you move to a um or you move to a exclusive buyer's agreement. Okay. So Canvas real estate, name of consumer, and the amount of dates that you're gonna be showing properties to that agent, right? Next thing that this says is broker's commission not set by law and are fully negotiable. So Canvas has always been a fully negotiable commission company. Um, so that's not new to us and that's not new to you, but we're disclosing to the buyer that commissions are not set in stone, the commissions are negotiable. Now this line is what makes this a non-binding agreement. So that buyer that you meet, correct? That buyer does not work with you exclusively. That buyer is working with you to see homes and not an exclusive relationship. Therefore, that buyer does not owe you any money at this time, right? So I'm gonna, I met Pete, we're gonna go see homes in Weston. We're gonna look at a couple of homes already. We are not, Pete doesn't owe me any money for this service. For this tour that I'm gonna give Pete and his family, he doesn't owe me any money. He's not exclusively working with me. Now, the next thing I'm telling Pete is, if you wish to work with me, with the broker, to purchase a property the broker shows you, broker compensations for services to brokers provide to you will be as follows, unless amended by the parties and writings. So remember that last line, because that is your, salva your salvation, unless amended by the parties and writing. So I'm going to tell Pete, Pete, we just met. I am a broker for this area. I'm an expert in, in uh, Western real estate. This is my lender, Yader, from CMG Loans. We want to make sure that we can deliver to you the home that you want and the terms that you want. So in the event, Pete, that you do buy a house from me, uh, our my compensation will be 3% of the gross purchase price plus a $4.95 transaction fee due at closing. Okay, so in the event, you don't owe me any money, Pete. See, you do not owe broker any compensation. If you wish to buy one of the homes that I show you, then your compensation to me is whatever you negotiate. I said 3%, it could be 2%, it could be 4%, plus the 495 transaction fee. Got it? Other, if there are any other terms to the transaction, if Pete requires a pre-occupancy agreement, post-occupancy agreement, loan closing, if there's anything else that'd be part of that transaction, it could go under other. Now, if you wish to work with broker to purchase a property, broker may ask you to sign a separate agreement detailing the part of responsibility, which means that this is sort of a dating piece of paper. You just met the buyer, you're working with them for the first time, after this, if you do work with them on making an offer on a property, you're going to write an exclusive buyer's agreement. So I met with Pete. I showed him home for two weekends in a row. After we looked at home for two weekends in a row, we found a home that he likes and his family loves the house. We're going to make an offer on that property. And the buyer's agreement it comes next, the exclusive buyer's agreement, which says that I'm working with Pete on that purchase. A seller or listing agent may agree to pay some of, some of all of the compensation. If a seller agrees or listing broker agrees to pay broker's compensation for service, broker will reduce that amount to what you owe accordingly. That means that I'm going to show that property that we're going to make a house. I call the, the, the listing agent. Listing agent tells me, hey, seller is giving a 4% concession or a 3% buyer concession which means that concession through the per, through the exclusive buyer's agreement becomes your compensation. So that 3% that you wrote here gets washed by that concession you're getting from the buyer. Now, I know you're going to have questions, but wait until we finish and, and we'll go to those questions before we go to form number two. If you choose a property already listed by a broker, seller might pay broker service for brokers who perform. So that means that we might find a property where the seller is not giving a concession, but the seller is giving a commission or a compensation to the listing broker. 
and the listing broker is gonna be the one paying you. So it's pretty much the same. So buyer's compensation can come two ways. It can come as a credit from the seller to the buyer to you, or from the seller to the listing broker to you. Broker's compensation from any source will not exceed that amount written here. So that's the key. The number that you put here from the beginning can go down, but it cannot go up. So whatever number you charge, offer to charge here can go down, but it cannot go up. So this is signed by your buyer. This is dated, signed by the buyer. There happens to be two of them. Signed by you. The minute you sign it, this becomes active. Then it gets sent to me for signature. So that is it for the pre-touring agreement. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Look if there are any questions on the chat or if you guys have any questions on this one. Um, da, 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 da. Where can we look the forms? All forms are in that loop. Okay, so there's no there's no questions on this form before I move to the next one. Did I know? No questions. Okay, so everybody knows. So you meet a buyer, you do not have a relationship with that buyer yet, right? You don't have a you meet that buyer, you don't have a relationship with that buyer yet. This is the form that you use to begin the relationship. You get to know each other. Because some buyers you're gonna meet, they're not gonna, they're not gonna feel comfortable signing an exclusive agreement with someone they just met. So then this form gives you the opportunity to build a relationship with that buyer. Show them some property, sit down with your lender, get the buyer comfortable with working with you. So this that's why I call it a dating, uh, a dating piece of paper. Okay. So now let's talk about the showing agreement. So the showing agreement is another form where you guys can work with a buyer. So let me close the chat. ¿Cuál es el beneficio de firmar el... So Mariana, el showing agreement, el beneficio que tienes que no es exclusivo. So si encuentras un cliente el cual está eh, hesitant de firmar exclusivamente contigo, puedes decirle, mira Ernesto, eh, mi, yo como bro, como agente de bienes raíces, quiero que te sientas comfortable trabajando conmigo. Vamos a hacer una cosa, vamos a salir a ver unas casas juntos para que me conozca, para que veas cómo yo trabajo. Y si vemos algo que te interese, entonces hacemos un contrato exclusivo para trabajar juntos. So la, el, el beneficio para el cliente que no es exclusivo y no debe comisión. Beneficio para la gente de bienes y raíces es que te da la oportunidad de empezar a crear una relación con la persona antes de hacer un contrato exclusivo con esa persona. ¿Ok? So, el otro es el showing agreement. El showing agreement eh, tampoco es exclusivo, pero el showing agreement eh, te protege más sobre las propiedades que tú le enseñes a ese buyer. So, if those properties you're going to show that buyer, the showing agreement sort of makes you uh, entitled to compensation on those properties. Remember, so you have the touring agreement, which is pretty much, let's go out, let's look at some properties, the same way that you guys are working right now. So that same way you're working right now, that is the touring agreement. The showing agreement, it's like that, but it makes a formal the relationship that you already have. So the properties you show to that buyer, you got them, okay? So parties is the name of the buyers, how many buyers you're working with, agrees to enter into a into a sort of an agreement between the time and date. So same thing, the more the the time here should be 30 to 60 days, right? So you sort of bind that agent, that buyer with you for the next 30 to 60 days. And then Canvas real estate right here. If you want to put Canvas real estate and you want to put your name, that's perfectly fine, but it's got to say Canvas real estate. Can not only say Ernesto Vega. It's got to say Canvas Real Estate. Property, here you're going to write all the properties that you're going to show that buyer. So one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, Ernesto, I might show a buyer 16 properties. And I'm like, you are a very patient realtor. But if you're showing a buyer 16 properties, you can put in the addresses. You can put in the um, MLS numbers. You can put in um, see attached and attach the MLSs. Or you can do multiple different 
buyer um, uh, showing agreement, okay? So MLS numbers, addresses, or you can do one for the properties you show this week. You're gonna ship properties on the weekend. You can make another one. It you know, it's this is just this is just sort of a formal registration for the homes that you show that buyer. Okay. Broker broker obligations, everything you owe that consumer, right? Since you are all ethical, ethical realtors, everything you owe that consumer, it's what you owe that consumer then all of the consumer obligations to you. And I suggest that when you guys have 10 minutes, you read here everything that you have to do for that buyer, because in the event of a procuring cost dispute, you wanna make sure that you did every single one of these items, that you didn't leave anything out. Consumer obligation is everything that consumer owes you, okay, which is, Everything that they have to do after ending an agreement with you is cooperating with you, notifying all properties that are coming in, notify you whatever lender closing agent they're working with. Uh, it, very important, hold you harmless from anything that goes wrong in the process and make diligent effort to sort of fill out the paper we can work with you. Now, compensation. Compensation is earned when enduring the term of this agreement or any renewal or extension consumer or any person acting on behalf of consumer contracts to acquire real property as specified in this agreement. This compensation is for broker service for consumer. This is the important line that every form we have talked about says, and this is what the, this should be your narrative when talking to any buyers. Mr. Buyer, my job is to find you a house on the terms that you want, where you want, and how you want with the best rates possible. If I don't find a property, my goal is to get any a seller or a broker, a listing broker to pay for my services. And that is what I'm working towards. So compensation received by broker, if any, from an owner or owner's broker for service renders to consumer will reduce the amount owed by consumer. So whatever they consume, that you agree with that, buyer, whatever number you put here, whatever you agree with that buyer, it's not, it's wiped out by whatever you collect from the seller as a concession or from the other broker. Now, when you're going to fill this one out, don't, this is the way you're going to charge that buyer. So don't fill out this one, fill out this one. So if you're charging a flat fee, if you're working with a buyer looking at a million dollar house and you want to charge $30,000, you put $30,000. If you want to charge 3%, put 3%. Here is where you add the 495. I suggest you add the 495 because remember, you can always go down. You cannot go up. So when you're working with a buyer, make sure you put the numbers that you can reduce from. Although it says lease, this is also going to be used for rentals. But as of today, we don't have a date when we have to start using this for rentals. August 17 will only be for buyers. Okay, August 17 will only be for buyers. If you want to charge that buyer a retainer, it's perfectly legal and non-refundable. You're going to be investing time, money, energy, gasoline, and brain cells working with this buyer. Right. So if you want to charge the buyer a retainer saying, hey, yo, Mr. Buyer, where I want to charge you a thousand dollars up front uh, for my time and efforts in uh, showing you properties, you can do that. As a company, we don't have a policy there yet. We're waiting to see what the market dictates. So once we see what the market is going to do regarding retainers, then we will follow that trend. At the moment, we're not going to put anything here. So my recommendation, if you're not going to charge anything, is to put a big zero there. Additional terms, same things. Buyer wants pre-occupancy, post-occupancy, subject to the sale of their home, uh, subject to attorney review, subject to mother-in-law review, whatever other terms that are part of the contract. Dispute and resolution, just like when you take a listing, is very important to get the initials of the consumer, yourself and myself in here. This is in the event there is any dispute any dispute, we don't have to go to court. We can go to mediation or arbitration, which is substantially cheaper than going to court and retaining an attorney. And we can put this to end. 
Um, remember, broker commissions are not set by law and fully negotiable. Broker may not receive compensation from any other source. They receive the agreed up amount. That's what I'm saying. That you cannot, you can go down, you cannot go up. Signed by consumer, signed by consumer, signed by you guys, signed by me, and then when we mail it back to that consumer. Got it? Okay, let me go to the questions, see if there are any questions on uh, this form. Da, 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 da. This one specifies the property in the question so the brokers are able to claim in case buyer goes another broker. So Fernando, yeah, the showing agreement makes binds those property to you. So you have a leg to stand on if the buyer decides to buy those properties without you. Um, what happens if the buyer sign a pre-touring agreement where we specify 3% compensation, but the client found a property where the listing agent neither not offering compensation is only offering 1%. How should you approach a situation without breaking the rules? So every company, everything is negotiable, Maria Silvia. If that's the case, you can go back to that listing agent and ask for uh, more money. You can ask the listing agent for more compensation. You can still write your offer that he has to present to the owner asking for that extra percentage that you're asking for. You can offer over asking and include that money that you're short from. So there's multiple ways where you can handle that. So if, and in the worst case scenario, if you cannot get to that number that you put in the form, then you will use the next form that we're going to talk about and you modify your agreement. Uh, if I wrote 3% compensation, but my buyer wants to purchase a new construction home, um, that one is a question I get asked a lot. I recommend vividly. And I think for the past year, I've been standing in a soapbox saying, you need to do buyer buyer uh, com buyer meetings. If you meet a buyer, you need to do a buyer's consultation. It's a must that if you have a buyer, you have a buyer's consultation so you understand what that buyer is looking for and know what is their appetite for a purchase. Because if you don't do that and the compensation is one of those, you put 3% 3, 3 compensation and you end up with DR Horton paying 8%, um, there's a way around it, but I don't recommend it. Uh, Ernesto, so if the listing is giving concessions, compensation 4%, but we have an agreement with a buyer of 5%, we have to accept 4% because the seller concession trumps our agreement. So no, Jasmine, you can always ask, you can always ask the listing agent if the broker is willing to pay you that 1% difference, right? You can ask for more concession from the seller and worst case scenario, if they don't, then you modify the agreement. Can I charge a returner fee? And if the consumer buys a property with me, then reduce the amount? No. So the compensation rate is non-refundable and it does not apply. So it works to your benefit. The conception that a seller is going to give, where do we put it in the contract? The cons Ariel, if you're saying the contribution, the seller's concession, so in the contract, you'll do it. I, I mean, I'll, I'll send it to you guys. It's buyer and seller agree. The buyer will give, you know, seller will give buyer a concession of 2%, 4%, 10%, whatever number you want to. Uh, but I will, I will share that with you guys. And that, that contribution by using the exclusive buyer's agreement becomes your compensation. Uh, and last question before we go to the notification, Katrina is asking, on the buyer's agreement, can you put a range? No. You got to put a specific number, Katrina. You have to put three, five, six, whatever you negotiate with your buyer. Now let's go to the last form, unless there's any other questions. Going one. Okay, there's a question. When it comes to closing, who's paying the agent? Is it the same now? So no, Jasmine, so the, the compensation to a buyer's agent can come from three places. Place number one is the buyer. The buyer can pay you directly at closing. Place number two, the listing broker. The listing broker can pay Canvas directly at closing. So the listing agent is getting paid from the seller and then the listing agent at closing is paying Canvas and that's how you get paid. And the number three, which is the most popular one, is 
the sellers are giving concessions. If you guys looked at an email you got from the MLS, no matter what MLS you are a member of, the MLS will now have concessions, which is what will give you the green light to know that that listing is offering some form of concession. And that concession becomes your compensation by form of the exclusive buyer's agreement. I hope that answers your question, Jasmine. Let me go to my last documentation. And here we go. So this little piece of paper that you are looking at is what I call the hat trick. This is what makes everything better, okay? So if you meet a buyer and the compensation changes, you can change it right here. If you meet a buyer and you want to extend the period, protection period, you can change it here. If you have a cancellation fee and you want to charge a cancellation fee, it goes here. If you're terminating this agreement, which means that you are canceling the agreement with this buyer and they're going on their merry way, it goes here. So this little form, the way it works is the following. I take out P to look at homes and my agreement, I put 4% of purchase gross purchase price. After trying to get a higher concession from the owner of the property or trying to get a extra percentage point from the listing agent, I only got half of a percent. So I'm now collecting three and a half, but the agreement I have with P says 4%. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna change compensation to broker will be three and a half percent plus 495. So if the compensation changes, doesn't mean that you have to charge your buyer. You literally pull out this piece of paper, right? And you go ahead and change the amount that you're gonna charge. Got it? So consumer's name, brokerage name, if you're modifying an exclusive buyer's agreement or if you're modifying a showing agreement, you got to select which one of the two you're modifying and when it will sign, okay? And then this has all the modifications that you can do. You can modify the termination day. You can modify the compensation. You can modify the protection period. You can modify the cancellation fee, okay? And so these are all of the things that you can modify in the agreement, right? Then same thing, consumer signs, consumer signs, you sign, I sign. We put the date that is going back to the buyer and we now have a modify modification agreement. So if that's what I'm saying, you can begin with a higher compensation and it all begins. And I know there's a lot of what ifs that everybody's circling. This okay. all will work. I think somebody needs to mute themselves there. You are, all of this will work out when you sit on that buyer consultation face to face. No, sentando por ahí. Okay, I can unmute who that is. So you will be, you will be working this out when you sit face to face with a buyer. So yes, I understand that this looks different than everything that we have done in the past, but it's not. It's literally the same way you're just presenting an extra piece of paper that if you have been doing buyer's consultations with me, I always teach you to present the offer document, which becomes a contract, all addendums and all information, the application needed for a loan. All of that I presented in my buyer's consultation because I want the buyer to understand the process. So these forms will be included in that presentation so the buyer feels comfortable and trusts you with the process. Got it? Good, now I'm gonna go to questions and we're gonna wrap this one up. Um, Luz, you had a question? Sí, buenas tardes, Ernesto. Tenía una preguntita. Yo eh, quiero hacer una oferta a una propiedad, estoy hablando con la Realtor, ¿no es cierto? Y es para mm -hmm. mí. Eh, llegamos a un acuerdo, digamos, ella me dijo ayer 750 mil, eh, pero que no comisión y no closing cost. Luego parece que habló con los sellers y dijeron que, ok, que me iban a dar 2%, pero que no podía decir comisión que tenía que decir era que touch to the closing eh, cost. Seller, con, seller concessions. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que tengo? ¿Qué, qué, 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 qué papeles le tengo que afirmar a ella, mandar a ella? 
a ella, a, si me mandas un email, te mando el documento para firmar, pero al contrato tienes que agregarle. Eh, seller will give buyer 2% seller concession towards closing costs and prepays. Uh, ok. Uh, si me mandas un correo, te lo mando, porque sé que no, te, sé que no, no, no te vas a recordar después que colgamos. Si me mandas un correo, yo te lo hago llegar. Entonces, te, aquí mismo te puedo mandar que no tengo No, 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 no. Evega Canvas a read.com. Evegaacanvasarid.com. Eh, ah, ok. Perfecto. Entonces yo te mando un correo porque eh, sí, esa es la pregunta okay. que Gracias. Ok, no problem. Katrina, you had a question? Yeah, I don't know if it sounds similar to what she was asking. Um, I had a case where the seller was offering a additional concession to the buyer's agent. Okay, and additional so, or a concession? Um, so it was a concession for the buyers, okay. and he was offering the buyers, um, let's say like twenty thousand towards their purchase or down payment. So in that case, um, when I do the buyer's agreement and I do my three percent, but I come across this property that's offering these extra compensations and concessions, do I yeah, use that? What do you What do you mean extra? That's what you're confusing me. So he was paying two and a half percent um commission to the buyer's agent. So the and the broker the broker already told you that they're offering two and a half percent compensation. This is on a previous case, yes. Okay, so remember, guys, the MLS is already changing. So anybody you're working with right now, make sure you contact before you write in an offer. The, although the changes are supposed to take effect on the 17th. The MLS is little by little removing uh, what used to be commissions. So that would, what, whoever's working an offer that is not executed today, please look at the MLS and make sure that that MLS has not been changed already. So Katrina, if the broker is offering you two and a half percent, right? So you're saying right. and yes. there's a $20,000 buyer's concession. Yes. So you're saying, okay. And a... 3,000 buyer's agent concession. Using this modification form, can I then go back in to adjust the buyer's agreement according to these terms that the seller is offering? Yes, but then you're going to have to reflect if you're giving any of that money to the buyer on the contract because the lender needs to know that. And then on the modification, you're going to have to, I recommend that you put a flat number instead of a percentage. A percentage plus a, a, a number doesn't work. So you're going to have to do the math, right? And um, do the math and put a flat, no, a, a total number. So just add the old commission amount. Yeah, so if it was, if it was $100,000 and it's two and a half, it's $2,500 plus they're giving you 3,000. So then it's, uh, 5,500, so put 5,500 and then give uh, the 20,000 to the, the, on the contract, put the 20,000 to the buyer. Okay, thank you. No problem. Let me see if there's any other questions. Da, 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 da. Okay, so So Ariel, en el Exclusive Buyer's Agreement él dice que lo que tú recibas de, el, de lo que se reciba de concesión se vuelve tu compensación. Por eso que todo el mundo le digo, tú puedes empezar con el Showing Agreement o puedes empezar con el eh, Touring Agreement, pero cuando ejecutes el contrato le agregas el Exclusive Buyer's Agreement y el Exclusive Buyer's Agreement es el que dice que la contribución del vendedor it will be to compensation, Ariel. Coach Milan, you have a question? Coach Milan, you have a question? I do. Okay, cool. Uh, and that's so based on the conversation that you had with uh, not the previous agent, am I understanding this right, that stellar contributions are to are to be submitted on a different form, or could we still incorporate them with with within the original offer. No, so, okay, if the, if the seller is giving money to the buyer, it doesn't matter if it's going to be used for your compensation or not, it still needs to be in the contract. Right. Okay, right? so, so if the seller is giving money to the buyer, 
It still needs to be written in the contract. Okay. And then it's only for our commission that we need to clarify what it is. Got it. Then we send the form. Yep. Correct? Good. Uh, Jana, yes, you can modify the, the exclusive buyer's agreement. You can modify the showing agreement. The touring agreement cannot be modified because the touring agreement, they don't owe you any form of compensation. The touring agreement is just your, you know, showing, uh, you're showing on properties. You can, you can, Jana, you can bring the amount down. You cannot bring the amount up. So that's why when you meet the buyers, you have a buyer's consultation and you try to understand the buyer the best that you can. So you can write an agreement that you can downgrade, but not upgrade. Um, Jasmine, you had a question. We have two more minutes, people. I just wanted to know the difference between concession and compensation, because we continue to use those words, but it seems like it might be the same definition. But... No, no. So okay. concession is what you contribute. Concession is contribution. It's what the seller is giving the buyer, right? It's like it's what the seller is giving the buyer that you're going to use that monies to pay for your the, the fees that you're charging the buyer is what that's why it's worked around. That is concession. Compensation is if you take a listing from somebody, right? And they authorize you to share your compensation with other brokers. So then Canvas will be collecting 6% at closing and then Canvas will be paying uh, peak realty at closing. So on the MLS, it's going to always, from now on, it's yeah. just going to say concession. Concession. The MLS no from now on is only going to say concessions. It's nothing else. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Last question, anybody? Fantastic. I want to thank you all for participating. Um, this is being recorded and the recording will be shared with you guys. If you guys have ever any questions or you're working with a buyer and you are confused because think I know it's all loud. <laughs> Believe me, I'm confused myself. Uh, I'm, uh, you can text me at 954-646-5677. You can email me at evega at canvasre.com. Uh, the entire staff is being trained on this daily, so they will be able to assist you also. So you can reach out to the transaction coordinators and they are trained extensively on all of that is going on. I will keep doing this one. The next one that I'm going to do is different. I'm going to do objection of handling, how to present this form to a buyer. So that will be my next one. And then I'm going to do one more called a buyer's consultation. And all of these will be recorded. So if you cannot fall asleep on a Friday night, you can go ahead and watch my Zoom. Have a fantastic rest of your week. If you need anything, I'm here to help. Stay productive.